Would you like to know the history of the Doberman? Why it looked like this before and now looks like this? Want to know? We have to go back to Germany in 1855, more precisely to the city of Apolda. It's important to note that the German Empire was not established until 1871, and we must put ourselves in the shoes of a tax collector named Louis Doberman who was in charge of reminding people and businesses of their unpaid taxes. You can imagine they were not well received anywhere. But what does a tax collector have to do with Dobermans? Well, I'll tell you that in addition to that task, in 1855, tax collectors were responsible for patrolling the streets at night, serving somewhat as night watchmen. Interestingly, it was also very common for them to be in charge of local dog shelters, sometimes even as an obligation. A year after starting to work as a collector, Around 1856, realizing how dangerous his job was, as he sometimes had to transport large sums of money through forests, even knowing that he was often a target for thieves, he thought it would be a good idea to have a dog. And this is where the dog shelter comes into play. After much searching and choosing a dog for companionship and protection, he realized none of the breeds he had access to. The dogs he was in charge of had what he was looking for. He needed a dominant dog, a strong dog, an intimidating dog, one that could ward off or intimidate anyone, and above all, protect him. He set to work and began to select the best specimens from different breeds to crossbreed them. The list is not clearly defined, and he left no written documents of the exact breeds he used but it is believed he started with the feared Thuringian Shepherd dog, as it had the size of a German Shepherd, a wolf-like appearance, erect ears, and medium size. Another breed supposedly used was the now-extinct Butcher's dog, distant relatives of the Rottweiler, which was a very intelligent and obedient dog, capable of learning many tasks and also had a great history as a herding dog, military dog, and guard dog. After these crosses, a Manchester Terrier, which was a brave, lively, curious, and alert dog, characteristic of hunting animals with a somewhat strong character, was involved in the breed formation. It is also said that a black female greyhound was used, a very agile and strong dog and incredibly fast. Some sources also mention the possible involvement of the Old Great Dane, a large and strong dog, used in hunting large beasts including dangerous boars, wolves, and bears. Thus, after selecting the qualities he wanted, the Doberman began to take shape until it became the dog we know today. Well, more or less, because, what do you think the Doberman looked like in 1888? Its appearance was a bit different from what it is today, but how did it go from having this appearance to having this other one? To understand this, it's important to know that the biggest changes took place after the death of Louis Doberman, who died in 1894. After his death, and some time later, some dog breeders in England continued researching by crossing Dobermans with Greyhounds and Dobermans with Terriers to achieve a more elegant body and a more aggressive temperament simultaneously in 1891. Another breeder, named Otto Goller, also from the city of Apolda, like Louis Doberman, founded his own kennel. He was one of the pioneers of the breed and took charge of preserving and improving it. Otto Goller had a female Doberman named Gizi and a male named Bosco. He kept a puppy from them, and it was the first registered champion, named Matsi von Groenland, born on August 15, 1895. This dog was described as a vast dog, with very long hair and light eyes nothing like the Doberman of today. 
The selection and breeding of the best specimens and the crossing of Dobermans with different refined characteristics by various breeders led to a Doberman with a more aggressive temperament, almost like the one we know today. But it's important to note that there was a kind of division in the Doberman line. A Doberman bred in Europe is not the same as a Doberman bred in the United States. But why? And what causes this difference? To know why, we first need to know that the first Doberman specimen arrived in the United States in 1908. Simultaneously, Otto Galler and his colleagues in Germany continued perfecting the breed, leading to two well-differentiated lines. On one side is the original line, known as the European or German Doberman that originated in Germany in the 19th century intended for military, police, and guard work. This type of Doberman, which most conceive as the typical Doberman or the Doberman of all time, was not seen as a pet, so it was only bred for protection or police work, rather than as a companion animal. On the other hand, we have the American Doberman line, which was perfected after its arrival in 1901 especially thanks to the efforts of breeders to enhance other traits of its personality. Physically, it differs from the European Doberman by being thinner, taller, and more stylized with a very fine and elegant neck. This type of Doberman has a much softer temperament, a much friendlier character. Instead of being always on guard or alert, Breeders also work to reduce traits in its character, such as caution or aggression, making the American brother more of a companion dog than a guard dog, for which it was originally conceived. But officially, what should a Doberman be like? According to the International Canine Federation, there are two colors, the brown mantle and the fire rust marks, and the black mantle and fire rust marks. There are four more colors, two of which are allowed in the UK club. They are fawn, which is a pale beige or coffee color, and blue or gray with copper marks. Then, there are two colors not admitted anywhere. The white, which is an albino Doberman, and the black that does not have the fire marks defined. What about the legends and the bad reputation of the Doberman? Despite having an undeserved reputation as a violent and murderous dog, it has numerous legends surrounding it. But the Doberman is a dog with a very balanced and intelligent character, having served as a combat dog, rescue dog, and protection dog, performing exceptionally well as a police dog, but also as a military dog and even as a therapy dog. The most ingrained myths in society, even today in 2023, are the same as always, that it was created by Hitler and genetically altered to kill Jews. But as we have seen, Hitler hadn't even been born. There's also the myth that it's a murderous dog that goes crazy, that its brain grows larger than its skull, which is scientifically proven not to be possible, that they go crazy upon reaching adulthood or that they lose their sense of smell and bite their owner. But why is all this said? Well, there's a very simple explanation. This myth emerged around 1960, a time when, due to the popularity of the Doberman, there was a lack of control over breeding throughout Europe. To obtain a specimen of this breed and due to high demand, breeding standards for Doberman behavior were overlooked. Breeding bad specimens with good ones, some with problems, insecure, aggressive, fearful. Because of this, breeders began to have problems with the character of the Doberman, biting their owners and being quite aggressive, to the point that, from being one of the favorite breeds, it became one of the most reviled. This situation brought something positive. The International Doberman Federation created in Germany in 1975 established various physical and character tests for individuals intended for breeding. 
it yielded excellent results. So not only were dogs with physical problems rejected, but also those that showed fear or aggression, since none of these characteristics should be part of the Doberman's personality. Today, this standard or norm is still maintained, and for your Doberman to be suitable for breeding, certain medical tests must be sent to the German Federation, such as the hip dysplasia test, heart tests, and psychological tests where it is decided if it is a suitable specimen for breeding or not. Most breeders do not do this, so not all Doberman seen on the street would pass this exam. Today, in the world of Dobermans, we could differentiate them into two categories, the Dobermans for beauty or exhibition or the working Dobermans. This does not mean that a Doberman cannot be both for work and beauty. In the exhibition category, the aim is for the animal to come as close as possible to the standards set by the Federation, with an expert judge and the breed determining the winner that most closely matches the standard. On the other hand, the working category focuses more on the character and psychological aspect of the dog, without neglecting the physical aspect, of course. These dogs are perfectly trained, synchronized with the owner's commands for defense and attack, and for various obedience tasks. To give you an idea, police dogs undergo this type of exercise. So in summary, the Doberman is not just a show or work dog. It can also be an excellent companion animal. In my opinion, and as an owner of two specimens of this breed, the Doberman combines the best qualities of the great dogs in history, strength, agility, endurance, character, and intelligence, making the Doberman a unique breed, excelling in all its aspects and far removed from the myths and legends that surround it.